I made this, 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 and this. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can too. And together, we're gonna make a couple of parts that currently simply don't exist, including an upgrade for this MT410 2.0. Let's start off with some basics of manufacturing. There are three main types of manufacturing. Those are additive, formative, and subtractive. Formative manufacturing is basically taking a lump of something and reshaping it into something else without adding or removing material. This is gonna include things like injection molding, casting, and sheet metal pressing. Those usually require some pretty specific tools and aren't very versatile, which is why we're not gonna be dealing with them today. Additive manufacturing is when you take a raw material and build it up layer by layer to create a part. 3D printing is the main form of additive manufacturing, though technically if you're building up material with a welder, that is also additive manufacturing. And then finally, subtractive manufacturing is when you take a raw material and make a part from it by removing material from it. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about additive manufacturing by using this 3D printer and subtractive manufacturing by using this 40 watt laser cutter. Additive and subtractive manufacturing both have their own advantages and disadvantages. Additive manufacturing is great because you can make pretty much whatever shape you want, but because you're building the thing up layer by layer, especially with the type of 3D printer we're gonna be using today, there are some limitations with strength and design. Now there are several different types of 3D printing. The type we're gonna be using today is called fused deposition model or FDM. That's just a fancy word for using this type of filament that gets squirted out of a nozzle in a very specific and precise pattern to create a 3D printed part. This is FDM. And if you look carefully, you can see these lines that go across it. These are layer lines. Basically, this was printed on a surface with a nozzle that goes around and around and around, squirting out plastic on top of it in layers. That type of manufacturing works really, really well. However, those layers are also its weak point. Wherever those layers connect to each other, that creates an area that isn't as strong as the parent material, which is why FDM 3D prints almost never are as strong as their injection molded or even laser cut out counterparts. As a subtractive manufacturing method, laser cutting on the other hand, allows you to take a sheet of material like this Delrin or even a sheet of something like silicone and cut out the object that you want. This is a gasket for a differential and it was cut out on that 40 watt laser cutter and you can see it does a very, very good job. Of course, this has its own limitations because whereas this is a 3D object, you're basically only cutting cutting 2D objects out with a laser cutter. A 3D printer is able to build things up layer by layer, but a laser cutter is only able to cut out a shape from an already existing object. Laser cutters do have some other cool party tricks, such as the ability to actually destroy anodizing on aluminum, so you can etch aluminum permanently, like you can see on this center brace. And they're also pretty versatile in what they can cut. You can cut foam, wood, and quite a few other materials. However, they do have limitations. You can't cut something in a laser cutter that's gonna produce poisonous or noxious fumes unless you have a very specific setup that keeps you safe from those fumes. The laser cutter we're gonna be using today does have an enclosure and that helps quite a bit. However, you still wouldn't wanna do something like cutting PVC, which is polyvinyl chloride, because that chloride becomes chlorine gas and that chlorine gas can kill you. There are lists online that show you exactly what you can and can't cut with a laser cutter. So if you're gonna get into that, I definitely recommend taking a look at those lists so you know what is safe and is not safe to cut. There's also a wide variety of materials you can 3D print with, including not nylon, polycarbonate, PLA, PETG, and a bunch of other really cool types of materials that have a lot of different additives in them like carbon fiber. There's even wood, conductive materials. The sky's almost the limit, but as you get more exotic in the materials you're printing, they tend to get more difficult to print and require your printer to be enclosed, things like that. So printing with things like PLA and PETG, I believe this is made with PETG, are fairly simple and it gets more complicated as you go. Again, plenty of resources online to give you specifics about what materials you can use, what they're they're good for and their limitations. We're gonna be designing and laser cutting something pretty cool here coming up, but first I wanna go ahead and design and 3D print a replacement for these bumper mounts. When you first get into laser cutting or 3D printing, you don't have to go straight to designing your own parts. There are tons of resources for already designed 3D printed parts, and there are even some resources for already designed laser cutting parts. Of course, designing your own part for laser cutting is often easier than designing for 3D printing, again, because this is a 2D design and this is a 3D design, so you're basically just drawing out shapes for this, and for this it gets a bit more complicated. Complicated. This is Tinkercad and it's many people's first program they're going to use when they are trying to 3D print something that isn't already an existing
an object. It's free from Google and it works pretty well. However, it has some significant limitations. Basically, you're allowed to take shapes, drag them onto the screen like this. You can put holes in things, merge objects together, do measurements and offsets and things like that. But when you get into more complicated objects, it becomes very limiting because of its inherent simplicity of design. Once you get a little more advanced, you're probably gonna be using something like this, which is Fusion 360. I'm not gonna get deep into Fusion 360, but it's what's known as parametric design software. And essentially what that means is that it allows you to create parameters for things like hole sizes, distances between objects, constraints for certain shapes, dimensions, lines, et cetera, which allows you to make changes to previous parts of your design in the future without having to basically completely redesign it or hack your way through it, like you might have to do in something like Tinkercad. Before you actually start designing in software, I find it really handy to go ahead and do a rough design on a piece of scrap paper. You don't have to do this, but I find it's really, really helpful. What I'm gonna do here is just sketch a very basic shape based on what we have now. Gonna have the line over here for these mounts, the line over here for these mounts, and then something in between that looks maybe something like that. I'm also gonna do a quick end view of this end and a quick end view of this end because I need to be able to measure out these holes. I would recommend measuring everything in millimeters and designing in millimeters because most laser cutters and 3D printers are gonna be doing everything in metric and it's just gonna make your life a lot easier. I'm gonna have to go crazy here because we do have the original part in our hands, but that's gonna give me a very rough idea of where I'm gonna start with on this part. Next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and open up the software. And again, I'm not gonna get too deep into this, but I'll just very briefly tell you what I'm doing here. Essentially, I'm creating various sketches and a sketch is basically what you saw me doing on paper, but on the computer. And that allows me to create the different surface features I need, the distance between those features, the features in between, various small details, offsets and holes. And now we have a part that we can go ahead and try out. But before we do that, let's go ahead and work on our laser cut design. I wanna make a basher bumper for this granite grom. We're gonna be cutting it out on that 40 watt Creality Falcon laser cutter that I have. This thing's got some pretty nice features that make laser cutting a lot easier than it used to be. We'll show you those in a minute. But first, again, we need to take some measurements. This one should be pretty simple. All I need to do is measure between these two screws and these two screws, write those measurements down, get an approximate length between the screws and where we're gonna bend that piece, and then an approximate height for the front bumper. Now for laser cutting design, we've got a few different options. Because this is a 2D design, basically all you need is a flat sketch. You can do this in any art software. You can do it in Fusion 360. There are a lot of options. And unlike 3D design, this is pretty straightforward because like I said, all you're doing is creating a single flat sketch. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a sketch in Fusion 360. And all we're gonna do here is create our holes, create a basic outline in a design that I think looks good. Then we're gonna export this out. We're going to import this into a program called Lightburn. Lightburn is the best software you can use for laser cutting. There are other options out there and Lightburn does cost some money, but I recommend just getting Lightburn. It works the best and it is going to work the best with this laser cutter. Now, as you can see here, this Creality Falcon has a camera on it and it's been calibrated so I can just take my material, plop it on the bed, drag my cut image over it, and then we're going to adjust a few cut settings. Basically, you've got laser strength and cut speed. Fortunately, these are pretty forgiving. Giving. Basically, all you need to do is get through the material. So you can mess around with these settings on a test piece before you get started. And unlike 3D printing, which has a million parameters, generally speaking, laser cutting is pretty straightforward because all you need to do is figure out a combination of settings that gets through the material without causing any problems. I'm just gonna go 100% here, do a few passes, shouldn't be an issue. Now, I'm actually just gonna put a piece of notebook paper in there and cut that out. This is one of the beautiful things about a laser cutter is you can prototype very, very quickly with almost no cost. Unlike 3D printing where you actually have to print out the whole part, with a laser cutter, you can just throw some notebook paper in there, cut your design out on the notebook paper, and then end up with a prototype like this that allows you to check your fit. Then you can go ahead and cut it out in whatever you're gonna be using. There are a lot of different options out there for laser cutters. This 40 watt Creality Falcon is really, really nice because it's extremely powerful and lets you cut out most things that a diode laser cutter will let you cut out. And it's enclosed and has its own venting system, which means it's not gonna stink up your garage. Like I said, it also has that really nice camera, which takes the guesswork out of positioning your material. And it has all the safety systems you would need along with air assist to blow the smoke away from your cut, which makes for a cleaner cut. This is a fairly expensive laser cutter and there are cheaper options from Creality and other brands, but laser cutters have come a long way recently. And if you're gonna buy one, I'd recommend getting a decent one like this that has all of these features because it makes the task of laser cutting a lot easier. I've never cut this material before, so we're gonna have to adjust our settings a little bit. And I'm gonna do 
that just by creating a little circle in Lightburn that we can then go ahead and do some test cuts on this material. To do that, we'll go ahead and put this in the laser cutter. We just need to adjust the height of the head using this little template that comes with it. And then we'll go ahead and make a couple cuts, see how it goes. I'm gonna try a 100% power, a thousand millimeters a minute. Hopefully we get through it the first time. If not, we can adjust the settings. As you can see, one pass wasn't enough. So let's go ahead and try three passes. All right, three passes punched right through this Delrin. Let's go ahead and cut out the bumper. And there we go, a nice clean cut Delrin bumper. Now I just need to heat this up, put a couple bends in it, and let's get it attached. Now, obviously this is just a prototype example. If you were gonna make one of these to sell, you would definitely wanna refine the design a little bit, get the right screws, etc. But this should work just fine for testing. Speaking of prototyping, I wanna give you guys a chance to see what this is like. So I'm gonna do a giveaway where I 3D print or laser cut anything you want that I can make within reason and send it to you absolutely free. So make sure you get subscribed to the channel, drop a comment down there, like the video, and I'll be doing that drawing soon. Let's go see how this bumper works. say I'm pretty happy with this front bumper. As you can see, it took some pretty decent hits and so far is holding up really well. Now, obviously, if I was gonna run this in a production situation or something like that, I would wanna have these screws flush, but for testing, this is fine, and it has definitely protected the rest of the chassis from taking these same hits. Now, let's get back to our 3D print. We've got the part designed, and now we need to actually print it out. This becomes a lot more complicated than laser cutting because not only do we have a huge selection of materials, but the program we're actually gonna bring this design into for printing has a million settings in it. Fortunately, the most modern 3D printers you can get have pretty good profiles already set up for this, which makes it quite a bit easier to do 3D printing than it used to be. For this particular print, we're gonna be using what's known as TPU. This is the actual filament itself. As you can see, it's kind of stretchy and flexible, and it's gonna create a semi-flexible final part, which is how we can make the strongest parts for an RC car, assuming those parts can be flexible. In situations like this with an arm, where there's a limitation to how big you can make the areas that need to be the strongest, those inflexible materials aren't gonna be as strong as their injection molded counterparts. And because there isn't room to just add a bunch more material here, making something like a 3D printed arm really isn't practical. That same design constraint also makes things like 3D printed gears impractical in most cases. You can make them and you can make them work, but again, they're never gonna be as strong as their injection molded counterparts. That being said, we were able to make the design we created larger than the original part and we can make it out of flexible material. So I think it's gonna work great. There's only one way to find out though. So let's get this thing put in the slicer. This is called Orca slicer. It's a very popular slicer. And the slicer does exactly what the name implies it would do. It takes the model and cuts it into slices and creates instructions for the printer on how to lay out the material to create the part that you're looking for. So when we slice this, you'll see the different layers and all of the lines that will be laid down in the actual part. I'm not going to get too deep into how these slicers work. If you want to get into 3D printing, there's tons of resources online that show you exactly what to do, how the slicers work, what settings do what, and they've done a much better job than I can in this video, so I'd recommend checking those out. But for now, let's go ahead and get this thing printed. Okay, it took a few tries, but we finally got a good 3D printed part here. As you can see, I made it much, much thicker than the original part. It is still semi-flexible and it should fit perfectly in here. I think this is gonna be a great upgrade. Like I said, this TPU is extremely durable and it should actually be stronger than the injection molded original part. There's only one way to find out though. Let's get this installed. While I'm installing this, now would be a great time to go down in the comments and let me know what you'd like me to make for you if you win the giveaway. Also, don't forget to make sure you're subscribed so you can win. Okay, I think that looks absolutely awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and get the one put on the front and let's take this thing out and see how durable it is.
All right, just like that front bumper, these bumper mounts work really, really well. They absorb just the right amount of shock, and I haven't broken a single one of them yet, in spite of the fact that I've been using them for a little while now. So there we go, guys. That's a basic overview of how you can make your own parts with laser cutting and 3D printing. It's a lot easier than it used to be in both respects. And whereas there is a decent amount of initial investment, keep in mind, most of the stuff I make on my laser cutter and on my 3D printer are not RC car related. I make all kinds of stuff around the house. And speaking of that, when you go to enter the contest, no need to limit yourself to RC car parts. Anything you can imagine that's within reason that I can make, I'll go ahead and make for you. Let me know down in the comments and we'll be picking someone soon. Speaking of picking things, why don't you pick one of these videos?